Neurulation is the process of neural tube formation and its development into the spinal cord and the brain. Any complication during this complex process can result in neural tube defects. The development of the nervous system begins during the third week of gestation. Primary neurulation is the process that forms the functional central nervous system. Let's begin with the development of the embryonic nervous system. By day 18 of fetal development, the ectodermal germ layer has the shape of a disc with a cranial and caudal end. The cross section on the right illustrates three germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. At this point, the central nodal cord has induced the overlying ectoderm to thicken and form the neural plate. The cross section on the right will help visualize the folding of the neural plate, leading to the formation of the neural tube. By the end of the third week, the edges of the neural plate extend upward to become neural folds. The depressed midregion is now the neural groove. Each neural fold then grows toward each other to fuse at the midline, converting the neural groove into a complete enclosed and hollow neural tube. At the same time, as the neural folds fuse, a population of cells separates from the tips of the neural folds to become a mass of mesenchymal cells called the neural crest. The neural crest cells migrate throughout the body to form a wide variety of cell types, including Schwann cells, the meninges, endocardial cushions, parafollicular cells, and the adrenal medulla. Before the fusion of the neural tube is complete, the cephalic and caudal ends communicate with the amniotic cavity through the cranial and caudal neural pores. The cranial neural pore closes on day 25. After closure, the cranial end of the neural tube develops into three primary vesicles the forebrain, or prosencephalon, the midbrain, or mesencephalon, and the hindbrain, or rhombencephalon. These three develop later into five secondary vesicles. The forebrain develops into the telencephalon and diencephalon. The midbrain develops into the mesencephalon. The hindbrain develops into metencephalon and the myelencephalon. The caudal neural pore then closes on day 27. During early embryonic stages of development, failure of the neural tube to close properly results in neural tube defects, one of the most common causes of congenital abnormalities. Neural tube defects can occur as part of syndromes and associated with chromosomal disorders or as a result of an environmental exposure. Folic acid deficiency during pregnancy and folic acid antagonists such as carbamazepine, phenytoin, and trimethoprim increase the risk of neural tube defects. Anencephaly is the failure of the neural tube to spontaneously close at the cranial end, hence the brain does not develop. This condition is incompatible with life. Anencephaly causes high alpha fetoprotein levels and polyhydramnios during pregnancy. Spina bifida is the failure of the neural tube to spontaneously close at the caudal end. Vertebrae overlying the defect do not fully develop, causing the vertebral arch to remain open. Spina bifida occulta is an asymptomatic defect caused by failure of the two halves of the vertebral arch to fuse at the midline. The only evidence of its presence may be a small tuft of hair over the defect. On the right illustration, we can see that spina bifida occulta only affects the vertebral arch, leaving the spinal cord intact. It's important to know that in spina bifida occulta, there is no increase of alpha fetoprotein levels during pregnancy. In spina bifida with meningeal seal, 
the meninges protrude through the vertebral defect without protrusion of the spinal cord. In spina bifida with meningeal mylocele, both the meninges and the spinal cord protrude through the vertebral defect. Notice that the skin covers the neural tube defect. It is usually associated with Chiari tube malformation and hydrocephalus. Alpha fetal protein levels will be increased. In spina bifida with myeloschisis, the spinal cord can be seen externally since the skin does not cover the protruding defect. This is the most severe type and will also cause alpha fetal protein levels to be increased during pregnancy.